Rose Rowdy. Well, welcome to the Rage Rowdy Podcast. I'm Nikki T. I'm Kurt Ozon. And we have Miss Jenna the Master with us. Hi. Thanks for coming to our luxurious podcast studio here in Old Hickory, Tennessee. It is luxurious. Yeah. It's way cooler than Kurt's extra bedroom. Well, maybe not, but you know. It's definitely nicer. We it's got new <laughs> lights. Yeah. We got <laughs> lights. Brett hooked this up and made it look pretty pro. It does look pro. Yeah. It's awesome in See? here. We have the raccoons. We're all growing yeah. up, you know? Yeah. We've known each other for a while, and we're all getting to be grown now, finally. Yeah. Which is good. We have known each other for a while. Actually, yeah. I don't even know if you remember. Oh. Of course I do. <sighs> you don't. Okay. But <laughs> in Sacramento, I must have just moved to Nashville, but um, you were playing for Michael Ray at the time, and you guys played this radio show and i opened for you guys it was like i don't remember this i know you don't i know it was in like a very it i don't even know the building we were in honestly was it the the strip club place (laughs) rodeo club no 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 this was like (laughs) was it at the radio station maybe it was a radio event. It was, in Sa- it was in Sacramento or San Jose? It was in Sacramento. Okay, never mind. San Jose has the trip called place. <laughs> I know that you remember all of it and you were like, dang. That girl's got some pipe. That's Jenna Master. <laughs> <laughs> what no. year was that? 19. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like Probably like 2016. Probably the, yeah. Yeah. Ish. Crazy. Six, seven years ago. Eight years yeah. ago. Ten years ago. That was like before Ray's Rowdy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then Ray's Rowdy came along. And all was right. Yeah. Or wrong. Both probably. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow the perfect mix. Well, I think the first time I saw you play may have been CMA Fest when you guys played at Acme Feed. Oh, C. yeah. Yeah. Was that uh, me, Farron, and Megan? Yeah. Oh. And it was before I moved to town. Um, maybe 2019, maybe? Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Time goes fast. It does slow, go fast, yeah. But um, it's cool now that you actually, because I remember b- talking to people about you, and you didn't have any music out, and now yeah. you do have some music out. You were always like, the, the joke was, Jenna doesn't have music out for like the longest time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, Nick, <laughs> and Nick was always the one yelling at you the most. I was like, you got to get this music out. Honestly, though, Nick did support... You supported me when I probably wasn't worthy of being supported in oh, any way. You always gave me somewhere to play, and um, for real, raise Rowdy for life. <laughs> That's my boy. Well, you you were worthy of playing, though. That's the thing. Yeah. You're very sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's it's cool to see you start like actually dropping stuff. So yeah, um, music out right now. You can stream on social media. Drunk thoughts. Yeah. Um, and then you also have signed management deal. I have. Yeah. Why don't yes, we talk about that? With Maverick. Um, so, yeah, the long joke of me not having music out for way too long. I finally put out Drunk Thoughts. Just Drunk completely. Thoughts. Oh, thanks, Kurt. <laughs> completely independently uh, at the end of last year. And when I started teasing it, um, a woman named Marnie McLyman from Maverick she had reached out and been like, hey, what's going on here? I kind of like what I'm hearing. Let's go get coffee. And we just started chatting about, you know, goals and what I wanted to do and how to do this release on my own. And she started helping. And then eventually, just naturally, we were like, hey, we did the kind of awkward, like, do you want to work together? Do you want to work together yeah. thing it's like for a minute? You're like kind of hooking up with someone and you're like, hey, I like you. Do you like me? And then you're like, yeah, they're like, should we like, BFBO and then you're like yeah. Wait, what's BFBO? <laughs> FBO, Facebook official. Oh, oh, okay. Oh. I didn't know this. So you guys are FBO now. Yeah, <laughs> we are. Uh, but she's been so amazing. She, um, she's been a big supporter. She's got me really cool opportunities, and we've been in the studio. Um, we haven't gotten mixes back yet, but I'm very excited. Yeah. We're cutting some new stuff. How many songs are you cutting? Uh, we're going to fill out, um, this project. So probably end up with five to six cool. for, for the first EP. But That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. And same producer you worked with for Drunk Thoughts or? Yeah. Yeah. So I did have some time of like experimenting some before 
settling on Glenn and Paul, but it's um, Glenn Worf. He's a, a great bass player. He helped co-produce a bunch of stuff with Frank Liddell from like Miranda to Leanne and David Nail and stuff. And then Paul Franklin, legendary yeah, steel he's player. Good. He's so amazing. So Kurt likes him, so you know he's good. <sighs> yeah, he's um, he's the best for sure. Um, when I was when I bought my first steel guitar, I emailed him asking for lessons, and he was very sweet in declining me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he, yeah, I mean, he, he just doesn't. Why would you teach? You know. Yeah, he's the guy. I mean, but he's got online lessons now. This is back before the internet was invented. I was gonna say, <laughs> wait, did he have online? Uh, yeah, no. This was like twenty twelve or something like that. So Man, it was a while ago, bro. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, Paul's so cool. I um so sweet. Got to meet him finally. Just a quick Paul side tangent because this is my podcast, so I'll get to talk about Paul <laughs> Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> but I was uh as of the nominated for a CMA touring award for like touring band guy of the year. Let's go. Yeah, this was last year, so Oh, let's go. And uh yeah, it was great. And Paul Franklin was also nominated. And I thought this must be like one of those like ride in things where it's like people just ride in who the best player is but it's like maybe they're not even like touring or whatever and i was like well, maybe i do have a chance at winning this you know and there's all everyone there that was was so good you know and of course paul won obviously <laughs> and um well he's touring yeah. right which, which i didn't realize and then Stapleton. so he got up and he gave the speech and it was I literally was like on the verge of tears. I was just like, <laughs> he was talking about how when the Eagles stopped playing, he lost his family on the road and, you know, he, Vince wasn't touring as much and all this. And he just like missed the road so much and how he found a home with Chris and how much it meant to him and being around like Chris's kids and hearing them laugh and like them going to school and learning on the road. And he's like, it, this touring has meant so much more to me than music. And it's about, just the happiness in life, and it was so beautiful. I was just like, oh, my God, Paul. <laughs> and I'm sitting there just like, oh, my God, this guy's the, he's just a, the sweetest guy ever. I know. And most talented, of course. And then after after the awards, I had to go and get a selfie with him. Aww. And so I posted my picture like, proud to have lost to Paul Franklin. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yeah. I know. It's always such a such a great thing to meet somebody who is so talented and also just such a great human like mm -hmm. so kind and sweet and i love that i love when the good people win yeah yeah it's the best anyway sorry for the tangent i just wanted to tell I a story that. for whatever that's reason, literally so. what podcasts are about mm -hmm. you know yeah <laughs> so how did you originally get linked up with them <laughs> so um daryl my publisher daryl franklin mm -hmm. is <laughs> paul's son Oh, and so well, that checks out. I know, totally checks out. <laughs> so Daryl was um, a huge supporter of the direction that I wanted to go, and I just kind of—I mean, I had really no experience. I all I could say was, you know, oh, I like this kind of music, or I like this kind of music. I went through and listened to all my favorite records and tried to make some, you know, a list of common players that played on all those projects. Mm -hmm. So I like really dove in and was like, okay, I think this is the direction that I want to go, but you never really know till you get in the studio and you're like, this feels like me or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And um, so Daryl had kind of, um, he was like, well, what if, you know, dad and, and Glenn, that kind of, uh, you know, maybe not completely left of center, but just something really organic and um, definitely country. And I was like, yes. that that's me. Yeah. So... We went in to experiment a few times, and we got drunk thoughts in one of those sessions, and then yeah, we just went in to cut the rest. That's so, so great! I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. I've heard you play. Thank you so much for specifically the early days of Raise Rowdy, Rowdy on the Road. Thank you. Well, of course. Seriously. But we got to hear a lot of really cool songs, some of which got cut by other artists, yeah. and some of which sounded like Gentle Master songs, so I'm mm. assuming that's probably some of the stuff that you've yeah. been working with. Yep. Um, so I'm very excited for more people than just the 100 people that were at the bar those days to get hey, to hear more Hey, listen, of the songs. I also played the Raised Rowdy summer camp. Oh, yeah. 
in 2020. Oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Which I will say <laughs> I had I had only <laughs> been to church summer camp <laughs> before this experience. <laughs> and that was not that. No, it's uh, the church of degenerates for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I went with Casey. I think yeah. were we Yeah, we were in Ohio. Yeah. She was like, "Hey, you want to play this Ohio? Like, let's go." And I'm like, "Yeah, awesome." Have no idea what I'm doing. We showed up so to much fun. To yeah, what? to a, quite an experience. It was uh, so we did the first one at a campground, and then we were like, "All right, let's go back to that campground." And they were like, "We're closed for the season." So our friends Stan and Kathy live in Ohio, and Ohio's laws at that time were you could have forty people outside together. So we were like, "Oh, sick! We'll just do that." So they literally lived in a cul-de-sac with the back of the cul-de-sac like went over this hill, and there was just like big field. So we just all popped up tents in the field. <laughs> Is this like a housing development? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Me and Casey pull up and we're like, uh, oh. is this it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, though. the most thing I've ever heard. Uh, it's so much fun. <laughs> I love it. We pulled down the driveway. Yeah. If what I if I remember yeah. correctly, it was like a super steep driveway, yep, yep. and we park and we look straight ahead, and Mike is there with his Stop. all of his tattoo stuff, and there's people lying on the tattoo bed. Just getting butt tattoos. Not exactly dressed. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Just I think, so on brand. I think Mike did like 30 tattoos that day. Yeah. Just all little ones. Like, this yeah. is the one I got. Yeah. Which That's is great. Amazing. I, I can't see guy. it, but amazing. A little campfire guy. A it's little campfire rally. guy. Yeah. Where is Mike? Um, He's back in Ohio. Okay. So cool. we just got to see him. He was at Midland, Michigan at the festival we were at. He was tattooing there. Cool. Tell me and Tall Boys. And then he was at country concert just, like, drinking and hanging out. Cool. Uh, very fun. But he's back in Ohio. Once Lexi had the baby, they moved back to Ohio. Awesome. So he, you'll see him on the road with folks yeah. more so than in Nashville at this point. Yeah. We're trying to talk him into coming back down for uh, an event. We'll see if it works. But I don't have any tattoos because my mother would disown me. But I, I told him if I ever did, His be he'd the one, be huh? the guy. Yeah, Mike... Uh, He's dude. I mean, he tattooed Ed Sheeran. What? Yeah. Wow. Ed's people contacted him when he was in a like when Ed was rolling through Ohio, and they were like, "Hey, Ed wants a tattoo." So he tattooed Ed. No which is way. Absurd. That's yeah. pretty cool. And then he's been on the road with Nate a bunch, Bailey a bunch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, tattoo stuff. Yeah, all of them. Tattoo stuff. But yeah, summer camp. So very fun, and we. You know, we were used to going to festivals every year, and that's yeah. when we saw a lot of our friends. So we just had our own baby festival in the backyard of forty the people, but which there was is no such, babies there. Yeah, <laughs> such a random. You can have forty people. Yeah, no more, no yeah. less. COVID days, you know, random so. laws. And then later that night, you guys might have been gone already, but later that night, Ryan Nelson was playing, and he was very drunk. And uh, he was odd. like, yeah, it's strange. Yeah. <laughs> he was uh, he was like screaming profanities on the mic and the cops came and they're like, hey, this is awesome. Like, you guys are great. But like, could you just not scream profanities on the microphone? And we're like, yeah, we'll just turn the microphone off at this point. You know, <laughs> <laughs> smart. Yeah. I was definitely gone by then, yeah. but sounds y You guys awesome. did great. You got in, <laughs> saw the degeneracy and you're like, all right, we're going back to Nashville. <laughs> It was awesome. It was so much fun. Just it was silly so fun. and like just made our crew feel more like family, mm, you know? Which yeah. is great. Yeah. And then we drank a lot too, of course. As yeah, moonshine. COVID, and you know. Different things. Yeah. yeah, yeah there was a keg of beer. They were pouring beer off the roof of the garage into people's mouths. What? Yeah, it was it was degenerate. But Let's be young again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like thirty eight. <laughs> 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 oh fuck I haven't been young in a long time oh boy oh. <laughs> but that was like either right when I moved to Nashville or right before so um, very fun stuff COVID was honestly for me a blessing like that's what got me to Nashville mm. so, silver lining I yeah. love that yeah I didn't die from having it, and then yeah. it made me move to Nashville, so it was a win-win. I watched Tiger King during that time, <laughs> yeah. and that was something special. Tiger King, baby, yeah. <laughs> it's a... Uh, what a great time for that to just... Oh, yeah. They were like, we know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> COVID Tiger King. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never financially recover from this. <laughs> it's a... Uh, 
I think that is a time that we'll look back on forever with ill thoughts, but also good thoughts. There, yeah. In, in my opinion, the bad stuff fades. The good stuff that came from it will will stay around. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think that's kind of what has changed culture a little bit too. Like you're hearing all these really, really sad songs that are hitting home with folks. I feel like that kind of started during yeah. the COVID era. I'm like finally my people, yeah. <laughs> my time. It's cool though. Make it sadder. Yeah. <laughs> it's just different. Yeah. Um, and it just changed. I mean, look at like Muscadine releasing work tapes during yeah. that time frame. And, yeah. You know, the rise of Zach Bryan and the stripped down kind of production that he's kind of now been known for. Um, and just everything. I mean, it, it made people forced to go on things like Facebook Live and TikTok and whatever. You yeah. know, because there wasn't yeah. any other outlets yeah. for it. So then when everything else came back, you have those streams of things that are now viable. Yeah. Nobody knew that you could work from home in the majority of jobs mm-hmm. until you had to work from home and then they were like, Oh yeah. You can do this. So We uh, even did a live stream which was fun. Yeah. With Luke. Oh yeah, I remember that. That was so much fun. And that's like that's the thing is like, you know, not the best. Not something I would ever request to have happen again. Yeah, yeah. obviously. But as with all things, humans adapt yeah. and you know, every business kind of adapted or died. Yeah. And I think it's another part where it's like, show what that looks like. Yeah. Like, what's it look like for you to be able to pivot yep. and try things out and do different things? It kind of took the machine aspect away and then allowed, you know, authenticity and people that were being genuine, gave them a spot. And I think uh, that worked in everybody's favor because I think yeah. that's what people want to see and hear anyway. Mm-hmm. So... I do as a fan. Yeah. So, yeah. When I think, honestly, now more than ever, it's, you know, like things like when you're talking about your morning coffee playlists and stuff like that, like what of your life are you willing to give to your people? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And so I think it kind of showed that even a little more. Yeah. Like what makes you you and how can you give that to people so that they either enjoy it or you figure out they don't and then you try and give them something else, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think it's cool. I um, love that. It's a it's a strange way to figure that out, but you know the world is constantly shaking and moving. Yeah, you know, just like Nashville, it's this thing here is. I mean, if you would have told me the Post Malone was have a country record and MGK was making country music a couple years ago, I would have said you were nuts. But crazy, yeah. It's it's just that's where the thing's at right now. Yeah, you know. And also, what I love about Post though is that he's come into this space and really like he's doing the work you yeah. know he's collaborating he's writing with people in the country space mm-hmm. he has a respect for country music mm-hmm. um covers joe diffie covers yeah. joe diffie let's go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well covers not just joe diffie but a lot of stuff I yeah mean, i know kurt I just... literally just got a video of him playing a luke song you know <laughs> it's awesome so yeah my buddy is post his photographer and so he sent me this cool video which i'll pull up right now post taste <laughs> if I can do it. There it is. Look. As good as gone. <laughs> and Look his band's him. like insane too. So, so crazy. How cool. See, that's amazing. I love yeah. that. Super cool. And I get to see him. Uh, we are sponsored by Bud Light, as you see back there. And they, they don't give us any money, but they did give me tickets to see Post Malone at Marathon. So that was pretty great. Wow. <laughs> Um, so, cool. so it's cool. And I mean, a lot of his stuff is covers of in the country world right now. But yeah. of course, he has a bulk of music that he's put out, not a lot of which is country-ish. So now that he's working on that, you know, it's it's cool to see him go back to the things that he found inspiration in for what he's trying to build. Yeah. So I think it's cool. What, and uh, it's pretty country. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the music's so fun. It's yep. so fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's one of those things, too, where it's like, okay... The pop side of things is definitely growing, but also Zach Top is starting to work. Let's go. You know, and that's as country as cornbread. Yeah. You know, so I think and the that's what I love. Big. Like, yeah. I'm a purist at heart, I guess, mm-hmm. um, and just have so much love and respect for country music mm-hmm. that um, although there's a space for everybody, I just I, I love that that is also getting a chance to shine. Yes. Again. So. Yeah. 
I think that's the cool part about the genre growing yeah. is that there is a big piece of the lane for that too. Yeah. You know, for sure. And there's other lanes that aren't that right. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, but I mean, having said that, it's like Shibuzi with big X, the plug, one of my favorite songs of the last year, <laughs> you know, is it extremely country? No, <laughs> but it's yeah. a great song, you yeah. know, um, you know, I've listened to pop music for the majority of my life and yeah, but same thing with me in terms of country, like the stuff that I love the most is the more traditional sounding, maybe more Americana leaning stuff. Yeah. Um, if I was just picking so- one thing to listen to. So, but I feel like that has a bigger lane now than it's had in a while. So true. Which is super cool. Um, on the back of other artists in that vein that have kind of had success so that you'll see people willing to accept that a little bit more in the mainstream. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the days, all the companies are just trying to make money and they're trying to figure out what the population will spend money on. True. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's like one of those things where TikTok has been a little bit weird in terms of like artist development. You kind of have to develop yourself or you have to like use a management for artist development now as opposed to a label. Right. Um, where I feel like maybe 25 years ago before all of that, you really saw some real artist development done by labels. Now it's, you kind of have to get that part done yourself. I just asked Marnie, I was like, so what was it like with Brooks and Dunn? Yeah. Like back in the day, she's like, well, we did one photo shoot pretty much per year. And I'm like, what? When you think of it from like a content yeah. standpoint, I was like, yeah, we did one, one photo shoot. We would look through all the, I don't know the right words, you know, film, old mm-hmm. film, look at all the proof. You like try to like, squint and look at all those the film the negatives thank you the negatives and i was just like wow crazy it's a very different thing now yeah Yeah. contact sheet is the word you're looking for yeah thanks but they print them out real small and then you say okay this is the good one yeah this one sucks and (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We love the, the flame shirt, and this one's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the flame shirt, and this one's great. The yeah. flame shirt, and this one's great. Yeah, <laughs> just only flame shirt. I had a a Brooks and Dunn like flame shirt. You know, like the, the amazing OG one. It was great. And I was like, man, you know, it'd make this shirt great. Cutting the sleeves off of it, <laughs> which usually does make sure it's great. You know, if you're mm-hmm. looking to wear it to like a Especially festival, when you're, you yeah, know. just guns like I have. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but uh, uh, when I cut the sleeves off of it. Didn't look right. Oh no, the flames. Yeah, because the right. armholes are too big, probably. Well, yes, and but I just looked like I was Bam Bam Bigelow, which is a professional wrestler that wore like a flame shirt with no sleeves. Okay. So I was like, don't look like Brooks and Dunn anymore. Now look like Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> this is giving me stage outfit vibes ideas for next year. Just wearing the flame shirt. Just dress like kicks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong. <laughs> That's so funny. But it's crazy, too, because uh, that, that look became so iconic for them. Yeah. You know? Country. Yeah. And, I mean, Garth was kind of in that same realm of, like, crazy wild Western shirts, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think Brooks and Dunn really, like, set it off and then also had their own brand of Western shirts. Yeah. That they have. Are, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can there go buy Brooks There was an Brooks official flame yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. That's the one I got. The Bam Bam Bigelow one I had. And you ruined it? Yeah, dude. I think I paid. Blasphemer. Yeah. I think I paid $15 for it. So it oh, okay. All right. yeah. well, Damn, that's cool. Yeah. So they had their own line then. I think, I don't know if it was Wrangler or, Wh- or Ellie Cattleman or which brand it was that they partnered with, but they partnered and put they out did. like all of those shirts that like were iconic. My dad for them. had one. Yeah. I remember. And they were sick. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting Still on Team Mood tonight or whatever that website is you are. Depop. Always on. Depop. <laughs> Yeah. What's Depop? Yeah. Depop is like oh, a... Depop. No, D-E-P-O-P. Okay. It's just like a online vintage store or online like secondhand store. What? Yeah. Oh, it's big. How did I not know about this? See, I'm good at the internet. That's why. Okay. Well, I need Nick help, so I'll call you. Stuff from that like weekly. I'm like, hey, you said you wanted to don't mess with Texas t-shirt that was like old and single stitched. I found one. I don't think I ever said that, by the way. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, all right. Your memory's better than mine. You said it while we were in Cincy. Oh. Cincinnati got me. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, it I'm going to have to send you a list of stuff I want. I, I'm like, uh, well, so we just I gave Kurt this shirt, uh, George Strait shirt, and he'd had it for a while. It was too big for Kurt, slightly, I think. It's like a... XL, yeah. like a '90s XL. Yeah, and guys can't like tie when girls' shirts mm. are too big. We like tie it in the knot yeah, on the like side. Yeah, or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, 
So I gave it to Kurt, and he had it for a while, and he's like, yo, I gave that to Jamie. And Jamie band, wore it. Band guy. Band oh, band yeah. Guy. Yeah, in the band. And Jamie wore it on stage, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> but it was a little too big for him. He had to like, kind of tuck it in. Yeah, yeah. So, But uh, it, he, Kurt was good. like, there, to, so many people were DMing him asking where he got that shirt. <laughs> so my thing is, if I see a shirt that's too good and it's a good price, I just get it. And I'll figure out whose it is. You know, Aww. the shirt will find its owner. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like I mean? the sisterhood like, of the traveling. Yeah. Band. <laughs> but if it's like, if you get a shirt Sister. that's vintage and is that nice, yeah. and you can get it for like 15 bucks. Oh, you for sure. It, you know, I saw a vintage Jeep shirt that had like cactus. It was like desert uh, theme and I really wanted it, but I didn't. I think it was like a triple X. I don't know. It wasn't my size. Anyway, the other thing I'll do is I'll take pictures of those shirts, even if I don't buy them. And then I use that as design inspiration for shirts. Like you can send that to a designer. So if you find like a shirt from the 90s where you're like, man, this is sick. It's like, just take a picture of that. And then when you go to get a t-shirt done, you can be like inspiration. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I actually have my first batch of merch coming. Really? Friday, I think. That's awesome. It'll you have any here. proofs you can pull up and show us? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, hang on. This Where's is why Nick told you to go on the internet so we can do yeah. this Oh, this we is. Can share it. See, yeah. I was like, I don't need the internet. We always need the internet. The internet. Do you have Jenna's number? You can share the yeah. Wi-Fi with her. Uh, can I not send it to you from here? Or do you? Or Theoretically, do just... if the internet works good. Yeah, okay. just show it to us if you got it on your phone. Let's oh, yeah, see here. Let's pull it up. Here, we were... Me doing techie things. Rub my internet on yours. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Uh... Funny story, we um, we convinced Jake that when you airdrop something with somebody, you had to put your phone next to theirs, the tap, and he thought that was real for the longest time, and now it kind of is, like it yeah. changed. <laughs> you All guys right. made it happen. Yeah. Okay, this will be the koozie. Ooh. How do okay, we I would drink a ranch know. water out of that. Let's yep. go. It right? has a Texas color to it. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I love it. I don't know where the cameras are, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Here they are. 1984. Here it is. Here. <laughs> Here's the koozie you want. Yes. Okay. And then uh, let's see here. These are some stickers. Oh yeah. Let's go for the stickers. Yep. yep. Stickers are are, are good. This I like is, the branding. This uh, is a shirt. I wear those. <laughs> this will be, you know, the gender neutral shirt. Just oh, yeah. logo on the front, and then yep. the back is cowboy shit. Yeah. Pretty much. There's a little uh, Easter egg. You see here, Happy the Three-Legged Dog. That Aww. may or may not be a lyric in a song that Whoa. is coming. I love that. It's a lot to unpack, but yeah. Congrats. We're I'm also seeing started. some, you got some new hardware over there as well. <gasps> I do. Yay. Aww. <laughs> That's Abram the best. is the best. Yeah. How did you guys... Uh, originally meet so abram Love. is uh a songwriter here he's mm -hmm. awesome i didn't know he was a songwriter when we met because we were on a turkey hunt in texas nice yeah it was my first country shit i know Damn. it was my first turkey hunt uh nwtf has this event called gobblers and guitars and they bring artists and songwriters out and they set you up on an awesome hunt and then at the end of the week you play a show and it's pretty fun. Pretty, pretty fun. I was blessed. Yeah. And you found love. I know. Abram was uh, there actually filming. He has like a side media company. And so he pretty much filmed my entire hunt. We were there for a week. And like the first three days we didn't see any turkeys. And it was like 110 degrees. And we hiked like... I don't know, 20 miles every day, uphill always, you know. <laughs> but really, it was kind of intense, and then I finally ended up getting uh, two turkeys and one shot, uh -oh. which was super fun and legal in Texas. Yeah. It's not legal everywhere, but it was there. Texas, Texans. Um, but yeah, Abram uh, was just super kind. You could definitely tell that he was just different. He's... He's the best. Good one. He's a yeah. good boy. Yeah. He is. We love him very much. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You guys know Abram, right? Have you guys met? I don't think so. I don't have you not? I, I'm not sure. But okay. we'll meet soon. Yeah, yeah, you will. 
Well, we're excited. Cause, <gasps> Thanks. Yeah, I know that you had been like talking crap on boys for a while, so it's good to see that you got to go. All my one. songs are like, <laughs> 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 I will never find love. There's good, <laughs> <laughs> There's good ones out there. And yes, I'm glad you got one. There is. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. God was looking out. Yeah. Um, cool, how cool. about shows? I know you've been playing like listening room and stuff around yeah. town. Yeah. Um, anything else on the book? Any like cool shows at any <sighs> historic venues or anything? Or I mean, <laughs> there's one in a couple <laughs> weeks. I'm getting to play the Ryman so for the first Whoa. time. I know. I'm totally, thank you. It's the best. Totally freaking out. I get to open for Terry Clark, which oh. is also awesome. So awesome. Uh, there's going to be some special guests that people are going to want to see. Who are they? Oh. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> They're special enough that you can't talk about it. So special. Um, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. I know. <laughs> um, and then I actually get to go out on the Ian Munzik tour this fall out west. Nuh-uh. Yeah. That'll be so fun. It's going to be great. I know. I'm so... I'm just so grateful. Ian's a very good friend. Him and his wife, Caroline, are good friends mm -hmm. of mine and ours. And um, I'm just such a fan. And he has he has created this movement of people. I saw Ian when he played his debut at the Ryman. And the Ryman was full of his fans who stood the entire show. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Like, the people love Ian. Yeah. And I love that. So I, I do him. too. Yeah, yeah, same. It's I remember when he was like starting to catch buzz, and it was like it, he would go to his hometown, and every venue would be completely full, and it's just him and his fiddle player, right? So cool. They toured. It was just him and his fiddle player for a long Forever. time. Yeah, that was it. It was super cool, and I love now their show features the fiddle player so much. Yeah, it's like he's the lead guitarist basically. Yeah, which is super cool and very different from you know a lot of stuff that we're used to in the genre. Yeah, yeah, all of it. Yeah, <laughs> I can't think of anything else that's kind of like that. But yeah. um, maybe a couple bands from like the Texas E world that are like really heavy on the fiddle. But it's super cool to see him like kind of. I don't know if he's the band leader or not, but it, at least on stage it looks like he is. You yeah, know? yeah, and just kind of an homage to him just going out on the road with Ian and just being them for the longest time. I know. It's super cool. I love that. And I love his sound too because it is, sonically it sounds very retro, but it yeah. also sounds new, you know? Yeah. Like there's elements in it and his voice is just so distinct. It Yeah. You hear it and you have no question whether it's Ian or not. One. You're fully aware 100%. of hundred yeah. percent. And just so talented. I got to sing uh bgv's on the last few releases that he's done and i'm like dang ian gets up there like <laughs> um, let me see if i can sing on top of that. <laughs> he's so just so talented to yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and it's yeah. and distinct and i mean you, it's funny too like you hear his brothers and his dad's voice yes and you're like okay these are all different you know it's not like everyone sounds like ian either his is just so distinct super cool yeah a lot of falsetto singing yeah yeah and, and uh I mean, his live show, the production work they do yeah. is awesome, too. It really sets the scene for it. Um, it's, I mean, it, I got to see him a few times, and it's from festivals where he's a short set to being like a headlining show. It's it's equally powerful, in my opinion. I love that. Yeah. Well, congrats on the tour. That's so cool. I didn't know that. <gasps> Thank Yay. you. Thank you. So are you going out? Are you going to be acoustic opener? Or are you bringing a band? Uh, uh, acoustic, actually. They're having... Um, like a write around for oh, openers. That's cool. So it'll be I'm sorry guys, I haven't mentioned you yet. It'll be me, Casey Tyndall, and Farron Rachels. That's Aww, awesome. The yeah. homies. Yeah. homies. Yeah. They're calling it the song swap. So That's great. It'll be a lot I of love that too because it gives the experience that not a lot of people get to see outside of Nashville. Yeah. Uh, yeah. to the masses, which is sick. It is so fun. And I think about that I mean, living here in Nashville, we see a lot of that. So mm -hmm. I forget that when I grew up back in Northern California, I had no idea. Like I had never even, I didn't know songwriting was an occupation. Okay. Yeah. I had no idea. And so the first show, the first show I went to here, it was, I came to visit during Tim Pan South and I went to a round at the Sutler, which isn't here anymore. Right. Is the right. Sutler gone? No, it's gone? Oh, so sad. Yeah. Um, and just such a magical you know, it's it's such an intimate show that that definitely blew my mind. And when people come to town, I just had some family friends visit. Um, they left today, actually. 
and they went to a writer's round I played last night and they were like, oh my gosh, like this was amazing. Um, and that's something that Ray's Rowdy has always done. And you guys have brought it places and, you know, it's allowed people to see something at a stripped, uh, at a strip level. So, yeah, I think it's cool. And like, I mean, places like the listening room Yeah. and whenever someone's in town, I'm like, you got to go to the listening room, especially yeah. like on a weekend. Cause like, there's not a lot of writers rounds on the weekend, but the yeah. listening room has their shows Yep. and just getting to hear, even if it's just 30 seconds about that song and about how you got there. Yep. Or about, you know, who you wrote it with and that what's what that was like or, you know, someone cut it, who cut it and why. You yeah. Know? Just those little details for someone that loves music can be the difference between liking the song or like absolutely falling in love with it. Totally. So I love that those exist here. I think it's one of the most powerful things in Nashville. Yeah. And it, I love when people outside of Nashville get to kind of experience too, whether that's like a listening room that does that all the time. You know, or yep. whether it's, you know, someone taking a chance on having that as the opening for their shows. Totally. It's amazing either way. And it's so fun here in town. I played uh, last night with Marla Cannon, and she's just one of my faves as a human and as a writer. But for me, um, hearing a songwriter sing a song that they wrote is so moving yeah. to me. And... It's just so cool. You kind of like dig a little deeper and, you know, you hear a Tony Lane song and you're like, wow, Tony has a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that influences the way the artist records it. Yep. So I'm just like, I'm very pro songwriter. And um, I was like going YouTube, like probably twice a year and like look up Jeffrey Steele. Uh -huh. and, and I'm just like, so good. Jesus, this guy's so good. <laughs> He's <sighs> unbelievable. He is. I feel bad for anyone that has to follow him ever because. And I love his, like when he plays solo electric, you know? <sighs> I love when he plays piano. Yeah. I remember. He plays what hurts the most on piano and just goes off on it. I'm like, ooh. My first time in Key West at Songwriters Fest. Yeah. Which was that like weird year where like BMI wasn't there, but we all still were. But I was there. Yeah. I mean, Kurt was there because he was off work. Was I there? Yeah, you were there that year. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was, uh, I was very drunk and at mm -hmm. Island oh. Dogs at Island eleven Dogs. PM AM. And, <laughs> yeah, and my phone was completely dead and uh Jeffrey Steele was playing like by himself, telling stories and I'm like in the bar crying, you know, <laughs> just drunk crying. You're like I can't even document <laughs> yeah, it. Just happy crying in the bar, <laughs> you know. I just just this is the thing. Yeah. You know, like this is these moments are why this exists. Yeah. That's why we like songs. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's so powerful when it's stripped down as much as it's powerful when it's worked up. Yeah, right. You know, and that's one of the Well, they say a great song like. should, you know, stand the t if it, if it if it is a great song then it's great acoustic and it's great yep. full band and it's Yep. Yeah. And his stuff is very much like that. It's it's cool to see the songwriters too. I mean, just being a fan of music, getting to hear the people that wrote it and what they were thinking of. Yeah. You know? And we get to do that a lot. And it's one of those things where now we're doing so many events that it's like kind of become normal. But when you see guys like that and you see them play songs that are generational songs, you know, just a God given a, gift. Yeah. Like, yeah. Unreal. And then just how they're expressing them that makes it different than how the artist did. But like yeah. you said, like I remember hearing Hardy songs that Hardy wrote and then hearing Cole Swindell cut it and you hear a little bit of Hardy in it. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like once you get to know a songwriter like Singleton or whoever, yeah. guys that have like a style, you can hear that sometimes when it's in the song, you know, totally. Um, and their little fingerprint is on it. Yeah. An yeah. Even when someone thing. else cut it and totally produced by other people, doesn't matter that you'll hear that little bit that you're like is this yeah a jeffrey Steele song yeah you know? yeah <laughs> which i think is super cool and it's just more easter eggs for people that that that's their thing and they, they love it yes you know? yeah what what music did you love the most growing up well when i was really young we were only allowed to listen to Christian music. Mm -hmm. You're a good Christian folk. That's I was right. just talking about Christian music today. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that um, King of the Hill clip 
where Hank Hill's talking about the Christian band or whatever. Uh-uh. He's like, you're not making rock music better. You're making Christianity worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Very funny. <laughs> I saw a clip on the news, aka TikTok, that uh, <laughs> the news, <laughs> the news. Oh boy, Smashing oh, Pumpkins dear. lead singer was talking about this is what this is what brought the conversation up. Rock and roll, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was Wait, talking about what? rock and roll, and he was like, "What do you think's next in rock and roll?" And they were like, "Christianity." And he's like, "Well, that's been done." And he's like, "Yeah, but Christian rock, you got to make Christian rock better, not make rock and roll worse by making a Christian rock." Yeah. <laughs> That's what made me think of that that quote. Yeah, wow, which is he, funny. He, he said that Jesus wants better Christian rock bands or something. <laughs> yeah. I was like, so funny. Ooh. <laughs> but it's uh, I understand what he's saying. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. want the caliber of music to be great no matter what. Yeah, and if totally. And if that is Christian themed music, that would be the biggest thing on the planet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah. That's a. That's a, it's the news, you know, aka TikTok or yeah. Instagram Reels. Like, the news. I read an article about R. R. that news. means you saw a video. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I read this thing the other day. I'm like, no, that was on a podcast that yeah. I had watched yeah. while I was doing laundry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Information's coming from weird places now. Yeah. Soon the robots will give it all to yeah, us. Yeah. True. Yeah. So all right. True. But back to your music. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And um, then. I think I was eight. My siblings are triplets. I was no need to specify that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you feel left out. uh, No, because I was two years younger, so I kind of felt like a quadruplet. Yeah, gotcha. Until there was a there was a little period of time where I was known as the triplet sister, and that kind of was like, wow, I'm almost one of them, but I'm not. You know. (laughs) Um, God bless your parents, by the way. I know my parents are (laughs) rock stars. Yeah. Yeah. I am the baby. Yeah. Um, and so we spent a lot of time in the truck going. I grew up in a big rodeo family, so we competed like almost every weekend. Mm-hmm. So a lot of drive time. And um, we, as we started listening to country music, I remember the first time uh, Fancy came on the radio. And I was too young, obviously, to know what it was about. And I remember my mom looking at my dad like, this is what we're going to you know, let them listen to. And she loves Reba. She's a big Reba fan. But it was at that moment, I was like, yeah, we're here. We're in the country (laughs) element. But um, because there were so many of us kids in the back seat, I think at one point my dad was like, all right. I'm not, because all of us were like, I want to listen to this. I want to listen to this. I want to listen to this. He was like, we have two CDs. But this was a CD time. We have two CDs in the truck. We have George Strait's 50 number one hits, and we have Garth Brooks' greatest hits. And that's Pretty it. Pretty solid. Yeah. It's so solid. Yeah. And when I think about, like, I listened to those records for years. Like, that was it. Yeah. And just to get to kind of, like, grow up on hit songs only yeah is something that is interesting and i think just started shaping you know the writer that i wanted to be the singer that i wanted to be at a young age and and a goal to aim for like okay why did this song work what was it yet you can listen to those records and be like man each each song like has it it has a thing what is the thing Mm -hmm. and why does it work Um, and then from like a vocal standpoint, Leanne Walmack is a huge, huge influence. I'm such a fan. Patty Loveless, any female, uh, singer that has, um, like a lot of emotion in their vocal, I was drawn to. And, uh, yeah, whatever was sad, tried to make it sadder and (laughs) went from there. Yeah. No one ever like grows up listening to like dumb music. Like when they come on the podcast, they're always like George Strait. I'm like, that's great, but I like I had like the Cisco CD growing up. <laughs> I had like I'm not nothing's anything wrong with Master P, but it was like that Spice Girls. Oh, listen, Informer by the Snow. World, Spice yeah. Girls, away, yeah. every boy and every girl. Spice up your life, people of the world. Spice up your life. Uh, there you go. That's I had a clip that too. I'm now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, well, I definitely listened to a lot of everything. Like, I remember yeah. listening to Snow and Former and the Red Hot Chili Peppers at the same time, you know? like What was the first two. record you ever bought yourself? Those were the first two. Oh. Snow and Former and Red Hot Chili Peppers, what hits? Mine was Melly Conley and Fitness Sadness, Smashing Pumpkins, and Tragic Kingdom, no doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm older than you. 
Yeah. And Jenny's younger. I'm trying to remember what was. I remember buying Gary Allen's. Uh, what record? Drinking dark whiskey, telling white lies. Mm. That record. Feeling real God, cool. Such a great song. It is so good. <sighs> so good. Drinking dark whiskey. Isn't that a Stapleton? Was he a writer on that? Uh, I think Johnson Brothers. Yeah, so I'm saying that the Steel Drivers have that. Oh, was that, that Steel Drivers? Yeah. Drivers. Wait, is it? And am I just now discovering this? Do we need to look it up? <sighs> well, if you have the internet, that's definitely a Stapleton song. I just yeah. forget what. Wait, band it dark was. whiskey. Tell them why not. Tell why not. One leads to the other on a Saturday night. Yeah. I <laughs> love <laughs> finding this out. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, I do not have internet, but that would make sense. And Gary Allen always cut yeah, great songs. Smashes. Yeah, he uh, his voice is just so good. Mm. I remember seeing him a couple years ago at CMA Fest, and he was like, I think the kickoff of the day, mm. and he's just his yeah, voice is Stapleton. Still so good. Let's go, Stapleton. I mean, classic Stapleton. I missed the show classic this weekend. <laughs> but what, yeah. what do you mean? He was here. He was oh, okay. at Bridgestone this weekend, yeah. and I wasn't able to go. But um, Marty Stewart opened. I love Marty. Same. Um, I saw Stapleton at a festival. In Arizona, that we were playing, and we were playing at 3 p.m., and he was like headlining. And by the time Tiffany came on, I had a few beers, <laughs> and he was playing far away, and I was just enjoying it, having the night of my life, singing along, <laughs> ah, like screaming, like so Bill good. Murray. Oh yeah, and but the PA was like, their front of house mix is not loud. It's not like a loud show, and people were like, shh. I'm like. What? <laughs> Far away. <laughs> I always remember that. That's great. That's amazing. God, he crushed. So good. I love him. Yeah, his shows are cool. It's it's definitely different, though. It's not a... Like, a lot of country shows are a party. Yeah. And Stapleton's is a good time, but it's not a party. Yeah. You know? I love it. Yeah. It's a really cool well, show. He's the, I mean, he's like the best singer ever. So. Yeah, he's, he's definitely top five. And writer. Yeah, yeah. so good. Probably human. Although I've only walked by him one time. I've never met him <laughs> yet. But Paul knows him, so. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Man. Paul says he's he's so great. Oh, yeah. and the I only whole, heard the best things. The whole gig is awesome. and. Yeah. When I saw him, Paul wasn't there. But next time. <laughs> and now that I know I have a Paul Franklin, Chris Stapleton hookup, I'll just call <laughs> Jen Jan- for free, oh, free free tickets. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> hey, I need more free tickets, please. <laughs> and hey, greets. They'll swap. Yeah. Know? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But it's a uh, it's one of the things we talk about too on the pod. Decent bit is the traditionalism is having another resurgence let's and go. it's having a time. Yeah. We've had like Jade Eagleson on and his thing in Canada. Yeah. It's like it's more country than everything else that's up there and. It, he doesn't even have a label up there anymore, and it's still getting played a lot on country radio. Up so there, cool, which is super sick. Yeah, I just saw he did. Uh, was it was him and Jake Worthington? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, cool. yeah. The song that together. Yeah, so he had that song out, and it's honestly it's one of his best songs. And then Jake on it too, who is just as country as cornbread. I love Jake so Me much. Too. I We're just playing with him this weekend. Yeah, I just hit up uh, in Canada. Oh yeah, that's yeah. so fun. I just hit up uh, them to try to get him on the pod too. So hopefully we'll get awesome. Big lad, help yeah. us out. <laughs> hopefully we'll we get Jake you. on the pod. Come soon. on, Jake. Yeah, <laughs> but we're you know that's where my heart lives too. Like I love traditional sounding music, yeah. and then you know I'm everything's in waves. Like I'm in like a rock wave right now too. Um, where I'm listening to a lot of like more just straight up rock and roll music. Even yeah, rock country, just rock, and then but also. Like there's this band, the Drop Tines, that they're like Americana with a little bit of rock leaning, and I just can't stop listening. So that's so cool. Yeah, always, I always just get a band or a song, and I'll just completely murder Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, just listen to it a gajillion times in a row. It's me with Flatland right now again. (laughs) Yeah. What record uh, have you murdered that you listened to it and ruined it, but it still is good, still one of your go tos? Yeah. Like I listened to Traveler so many times straight through, like, and just or got a song and just put it on repeat fifteen times in a row. Yeah, that I had to not listen to it for a while. But it's just such a good record that you could go back to it. After so dynamic it. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So different. There's so many different things happening on it, but it's all cohesive. Yep. And um, 
I mean, it's in my opinion, that's a generational record. Kurt, what's your record that you can listen to over and over? Well, I want to have listened to like way too much. It's probably like the Metallica record with the Symphony S and M record. Mm-hmm. Like growing up, I listened to that so much, mm-hmm. and just like that was my favorite. Band I've never heard up. this record, so I need to go listen. Yeah, I mean, if you like Metallica and, and symphonies, then I don't know if I know. It's a niche. Any Metallica song? You know, a couple. Uh, yeah. Okay. Have yeah. you ever been to a sporting event? <laughs> You've heard yeah. some. Uh, You've at least heard the guitar riffs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, what about you? I know. I was trying to think as you were talking about that. What would mine be? I guess um, Leanne Walmack, There's More Where That Came From, is my favorite record of all time, probably. Yeah. There's no bad song on that record. Love it. The That's production was awesome. Oh, insane. Insane. It's so good. I love that, too, so where classic. you listen to a whole record and there's no skips. Yeah, no skips. That's, that's the best, in my opinion. I remember, you know, listening to John Party's first record. Yeah. And I was like, there's literally yep. no bad songs on this whole record. It's yeah. record I had this vivid memory where um, I had this, you know when you would like, as a kid, you would drink like high C or Gatorade out of those tubs with the little spout on yeah. the bottom? Yeah. I had that full of moonshine. And, <laughs> oh, no. And I, I, it was when I was, I started touring and I was playing with Jana. And and Rob and Dustin Huff and I were hanging out, but they hadn't started touring yet, really, with Luke. And I came home from the road, and I had this jug, and I had a bunch of people over, and we all went in the pool. I used to have a pool in my condo, and we got Custry and Western fucked up, and it was <laughs> so much fun. And we just listened to that record on repeat, that John Party record, and yeah. it was so much fun. Yeah, that record is one of those ones. That's one of the things I like the most is when you get a whole record and you just can't stop listening to it, yeah. but you're also not, oh, I like these four songs. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, I call it every song sounds like a single, even though, of course, they're not a single. Yeah. But when every song has its own separate thing that makes you love it, right? Yeah. That's the stuff that I absolutely love. And it's hard now that there are not as many records unless you're already established. I know. It's you know? sad. A singles world when the record experience is so fun. Yeah. And I remember Garth Brooks talking, or maybe it wasn't Garth Brooks. Don't quote me on that, but saying the so- singles are the songs that you listen to. The B-sides are the ones you get a poster of on your wall that say the lyrics mm. from it. You know? Yeah. And that's the thing that albums can do for you is it can give you, hey, I know this probably isn't going to be a mainstream radio cut. Yeah. But it's going to mean something to people. Let's put it yeah. out. You know? Yeah. And some of my favorite songs, like I love this song in it that Josh Thompson wrote and Jake Owen. Oh, Jake Owen. That yeah. song is so good. So good. But it's like it never went to radio or anything, but it's such a powerful song. And in my opinion, that song just sounds like country gold. Yeah. Like it's it's a extremely well crafted. It is country is cornbread yep and it's meaningful and it evokes emotion yes which are the things that like if country music at its core does yeah so if not for albums you might never have gotten that song put into the world i, mean, I it know took years to get there in general and that song floated around for a while before jake and the team cut it but you might have never gotten that if it wasn't for him being able to put out full albums yeah right it's an interesting market we're in right now where it's like singles every six weeks <laughs> for a lot of artists yeah but then when you get there it's you can put out a hundred songs and people will consume it like when you're at the the top yeah. of the thing you can put out 10 albums at once and they'll all get consumed yeah but if you're a struggling artist or if you're newer you have to roll the wave of okay i need my monthly listeners to be up on these platforms yeah. to do that I have to feed them new music all the time. To do that, I have to have a song every six to eight weeks so that it doesn't dip too far. Yeah. So it's just an interesting dynamic of that mixed with not that at all, which is like Zach Bryan or, you know, the wall and double, triple records. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Luke even putting out two records in one year, you know, things like that. Yeah. When you're at the top of the game, you can drop as much music as you want. Yeah. But till you're there, you kind of have to be strategic and roll it out slower. Yeah. For sure. Whereas, like, previously, it was kind of like you'd do an EP, that EP turn into an album, that'd be it. You'd drop a one song or two songs before to tease the EP, one right. more or two more to tease the rest of the album, and then that was it. But now it's like if you drop an album, one song is going to get playlisted, and other ones are no one's going to hear. I know. So you kind of have to do single releases. I mean, even uh, John Mayer was on a podcast, and he was talking about 
somebody sent me a clip. I can't even remember who, what podcast it was, but it was like, I think the question was, what's keeping you up at night right now, currently? And he was like, I guess what's keeping me up at night is I don't know whether to release a record or just release singles for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, even somebody like John Mayer is wondering. He's like, I just don't think, you know, I think people are ready for something new pretty quickly. Yeah. And uh, it was just interesting to see somebody at his level be like, wow, that's what he's contemplating, you yeah. know? Yeah, it re- makes you realize that it's everybody's problem. Yeah. It's not just like... Well, and at. there's, uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot that goes, I mean, there's the release of the music itself, but there's the content, yep. uh, the marketing, yep. the, you know, merch that is specific to a single release, yep. all of the press, like there is so much that goes behind putting music out music out effectively so, yeah you can just right. put music out right doesn't mean anyone's gonna hear it or it's gonna get on any playlists or totally you're gonna gain any fans from it yep. organically it's or you can have a plan that may work or might not yeah try it if it doesn't work pivot try something else you yep. know but it's that's one of the other things too that until i really got here i didn't understand yeah you know and then working at a record label for a year and a half i was like oh yeah. that's how it works you know like you see behind the curtain a little bit sometimes like, it's not always fun to see how the sausage is made <laughs> well yeah but it's still it's interesting yeah you know even if you're like oh crap you know <laughs> i mean i think it's awesome yeah. and it gives insight i mean maybe i always try to think of like 12 year old jenna who is just a fan of country music yeah. and wanting to you know hear all the things and would she care Maybe not so much, but also maybe if she knew like, oh, wow, that's how something happens or that's how something happens and showing a little bit of light on that. I think probably uh, people have a better understanding now than they than they did in the past. So uh, I've never released music, but as a someone that signed or someone that isn't signed that released music independently, like what is that process like? Like, how do you get your songs on iTunes and all that? Yeah, so um, uh, distribution helps with that. Yep. Um, so there's a company that helps you get your songs to DSPs? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So like uh, when we dropped the one song, like TuneCore. So TuneCore is one that you can kind of get in with low cost of entry, right? Yep. So it's good for independent artists. Yeah. Um, and then as you go up the chain, there's bigger distributors that have more resources. Who, and who are they distributing to? So they're restri- distributing to the DSPs, mm-hmm. to iTunes stores for purchase. Yep. Um, and then part of that is you can have like playlist pitching in it. So gotcha. if if it's a bigger one that has established relationships with like digital service providers, yep. they probably have a, a better chance of getting you on the cooler playlists yep. or the editorial playlists. So is a distributor distribution deal kind of akin to a radio deal, like as far as like radio promo? In a way? Kind of, yeah. The only thing with distribution is you kind of need someone to do it. You can't really do it yourself. Um, Right. That's like a radio team, Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, radio is, I'd say it's a little more niche just because there's only a certain percentage of people that are dropping songs that, you know, are prepared to send stuff to radio or have the financial viability to do such things. Um, And then the hard part with radio is is breaking new artists, like streaming as well. But it's hard... People in country music love Luke Bryan. So it's, are they going to play another Luke Bryan song that they know the last one did good? Or are they going to play a random person that they haven't heard yet? You know, right. And if they've heard them or if there's something popping them to make them viable in the world, then that's the case. Right. So like, which I think is also why it's so impressive that, um, somebody like Zach top is having such a strong, yeah. Strong moment. Yeah. So shout out to, his team and yeah leo 33 over there yep um and his thing is so i I remember kurt and i had him on the pod god i guess like a year and a half ago something like that um just a quick side story about zach yeah my cousin is or my nephew i should say is tyler he's really into country music he's from uh, fort worth or denton or wherever and um he's talked to my, my mom his grandma which is weird to me to hear and say that and he's like yeah this guy Zach Top is like really good have you ever heard of him and my mom's like 
have I ever heard of him? And she pulls up her phone, <laughs> and it's a picture of her with Zach Top <laughs> at the Aww. podcast because she came to the podcast. Yeah. And her and my That's dad, so Zach. Cool. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it was it was cool. And Mom's Zach has just like, Zach has that thing, you know that when when he's in the room, you know he's in the room. Yeah. You know? Yep. He's very charismatic. Yep. Like you could see it, and you're like, I think this is gonna work. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always work with that still, but yeah, you you see that thing where you're like, oh, you know, yeah. Um, and it's different for everybody. Everybody has different part of the thing. Yeah. But he definitely had it. It was funny. Like we did the podcast with him and it went great. And then mm-hmm. we smoked a cigar with him after. And that conversation, if that was a podcast, would have been the best podcast we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> like that's usually how it goes. Yeah, you know? for sure. Once the, once all the lights are off, <laughs> that's when you like really hear the stuff that he loved and like what he really grew up on and mm. what he thinks about other stuff. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Just totally. A little bit of everything. Totally. Um, so it was, it was cool to get to kind of have that experience. And I put like this like 90s Western coat on him that was <laughs> 10 sizes too big because he was, it was a it little was chilly. Out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and That's it was amazing. just like, it was fun, you know. Aww. But it is super cool. I remember when we were talking to Kurt or when I was talking to Kurt about him, like when we were first, before we were having him on him, I was like, Zach sounds like all of these other people want to sound like. Yeah. You know, like his tone is just so country and it seems so effortless. Yeah. Even though I'm sure he puts a lot of effort into making it seem effortless. But it seems so effortless. And then he's just so good at guitar, too. Yeah. Not only does he have that amazing voice and that charisma when he's in a room, but yep. you also just watch him freaking pick the hell out of a guitar. Yeah, but his best thing is his songs. Yeah. Like his songs yeah. are amazing. Songs are amazing and like the voice is amazing. And they're authentic. I mean, to your, yeah. to your point, there's a lot of people trying to... There's a lot of people trying to be other people. Mm -hmm. And I think when you see somebody who is authentic, it's just like, whoa, it's so powerful. Yeah. Uh, You can't, and country specifically, I feel like, isn't exactly something you can uh, try to imitate. Like, I I think that there's people who can be successful imitating it, but Mm -hmm. I don't know if, you know. Is it going to be long term? I don't know. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't think you can't fake Zach Top and you can't fake Jake Worthington and yeah. you can't fake Wyatt McCubbin and yep. the list goes on. Um, but yeah. It's it's definitely one of those things where country music from its history is authentic and yeah. you always hear people talk about you have to be authentic to you, right? Yeah. And I do agree with that. But what I will say is I think a lot of times the authenticity will get amplified. So you'll take what is you in your everyday life and then when you're on stage, you take that, if say your knobs at a six or a seven, you take that up two points and you yeah. just like are a more robust yes. version of you. Totally. You know I mean? And um, there's always ways to improve and grow yeah. and uh, accentuate things about yourself that, yes. you know, need a little amping. But. Yeah. Well, and that's because if you're with you every day, you would see you, you know, your fiance yeah. sees who you are yeah. every day. The, the ups and the downs, but you would need to be on the whole time you're on stage. Right. right? Yep. So that's just the on version of you. Yes. You know? Yeah. And that's one of the things like, I mean, all the superstars in country music, you could dress as for Halloween, you know? Totally. And that's not like they always dress like that since they were 10. They figured it out along the right. way. Right. You know? Yeah. Totally. Like, what's that version of you look like? Like when did Eric Church start putting on shades and an American flag uh, boa? For his shows, yeah. right? When did he Bola. figure out that the uh, scarf? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Bola you know what I mean. Has <laughs> but yeah. like, when did that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at what point was he like, "Oh yeah, this works." Yeah, right? that's him. But it's like a version of him, right? Totally. Know? So I think that's one of the things that it has to be iconic. Mm-hmm. You know, like this Chapel Roan girl. Have you looked up her? Uh, yes, but I um I probably need to do some more because I was. She's amazing. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. How do you not hurt her? She's everywhere. Yeah. It's I know. huge right now. But also she's talked about when I was just being exactly me, it wasn't working. Now that I'm this character mm. version of me. Yeah. And yeah, in yeah. other genres, that is commonplace. Think about rock music and bands like Kiss. And, right. You know, Ozzy Osbourne like was literally doing songs that had nothing to do with his life. It was like books almost, you know, <laughs> yeah. character. Yeah. Rock and roll music, you'll see that. Even in pop music, you'll see that. But yep. country music, not often, right? Country music is who are you 
and what's the version of that that is marketable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you just got to figure out like what you can amplify of you yeah. to make it stand out. Yeah. And and again, now it's you have an hour show to do that, or you have a thirty-five second video clip online to do that. So you have to be mindful of it the whole time. And I think people historically have been, but it's just it's even more important now to kind of have your own like lane and niche. Yeah. That you're traveling down. Yep. At least in my head. Yep. So what else has I been going on? I think that's all wise. Yeah. Man, I guess. Um, are you still working with horses or are you out of that now? I I don't have as much time. Yeah. I mean, I still can head out to some friends' places and hop on when I want to, but yeah. um, definitely not competitively. Like, mm -hmm. that was. That was a full time thing when I was competing, yeah, but younger. yeah, I still get to hang out around horses, and that'll always be part of my life. Hopefully, at some point, I'll be able to make it a little bit more of my life. But yeah, when you get a lot of money, then you can get a barn and all that. Let's go, baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you can have some other young songwriter help you with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's how it goes. Though. I love it. Yeah. Well, thanks for hopping on the pod with us. Guys, so. thank you for having me. Absolutely. We've been talking about this for a while. I'm glad it lined up. I know. Up. Feels me like too. years almost. Yeah. I know. We love you so much. I love you too. Absolutely. Appreciate you and, and not just you, but your music as well. Thank you. Absolutely. That means a lot. Yeah. Thank Everyone you. go follow Jenna and go see her play at the Ryman. <gasps> <laughs> yeah. Come on out. It's, it's going to so be great. fun. What's the date of that? August 29th. It's so awesome. Thanks. I'm so proud of you, sis. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks. And thanks for hopping on the pod with us. And thanks for <gasps> thanks for having me. Just being a part of the Raise Rowdy family. Yeah. I'm a Raise Rowdy for life. I'm love telling you. you. Amen. Love you too. All right, guys. Well, I'm Nikki T. I'm Kurt Ozon. And we'll see, see you on the, the front, front row. row.